Once you've finished developing your application and you've pushed it up to a staging environment, or you've gone to production, you may think it's a time to celebrate as new clients are getting onboarded and started using your service. However, there's a part that I think that a lot of developers often skip, and that is load testing your application. And so I have a new Rails 523 application, and I'm going to just generate a scaffold. I'm going to create a model users with a first name and last name, so nothing too heavy. And once I do that, I'll go ahead and run Rails DB Migrate to migrate the database. And let's say the rest of our application was fairly simple like this. We may have had some associations, maybe some kind of authentication and authorization, but for the most part, the application is pretty simple and there's not too many moving parts. So when you go to deploy this to a staging environment, you're not going to need that many computer resources. And back in episode 106, where we deployed an application to Beanstalk, which supports auto-scaling web servers, and then also in episode 181, where we deployed to Kubernetes, where you could have multiple replicas or multiple web servers, all behind a load balancer, or if you're just deploying to a single server, on something like DigitalOcean, you're gonna to have to know what is the capacity that this service can handle. You wanna make sure that if you have any live customers that you're not actually running this against your production environment because when we talk about stress testing a service, then it could potentially make it crash and that's not something you want to do with a customer facing portal. So instead, you would only want to do this on a internal environment, something like a staging environment or a QA environment because as we load test, if the service does go down because we overloaded it, then we at least know that we are not affecting any customers. And then we would also get some visibility into the application and based on the system resources, how many web servers we would need. And another nice thing about load testing is that you're going to be able to hopefully expose any kind of memory leaks or other issues within your application as it maybe gets up to a larger scale. And when we talk about load testing, all that really is, is hitting a lot of requests to your web service. So we're going to perform various functions. And typically with the load testing, I would like to run through my happy path and then scale up the number of concurrent requests so that we are actually putting some load on the environment. And there's a couple of different ways that you can handle load testing. To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the pro membership.